Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I continue experimentation with the rocket sled design and its long ramp here. There is a kink in the ramp that caused problems in the previous video. I haven't solved that yet, uh, but I'll consider that. But first, I want to introduce the purpose of this rocket sled, which is to launch the Orion carrier plane and the Mini-Star and its payload. Well, not really the Mini-Star. What it's originally designed for is the Orion space plane from 2001 The Space Odyssey. The Orion carrier plane was always supposed to carry the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 The Space Odyssey. If you've seen that movie or at least clips from it, you've probably seen that space plane go docking into the big ring space station, Space Station 5, and that iconic scene with the Blue Daniel Waltz going on in the background. and. The way that space plane was supposed to get to orbit was on the back of a carrier plane, which in turn was launched by a rocket sled like this. And the reason for that, the reason why you would have it like this instead of launching vertically, is so that passengers can get in horizontally. I'm sorry I don't have the Orion 3 space plane that I made in here right now, but you see, when you've got a huge long passenger liner, space liner, uh, you can't really have the people get in vertically because they're just gonna like fall down <laughs> through a very large cabin because of gravity, right? I mean, it doesn't matter in space, but uh, it, on the ground, if you have it vertical, uh, we've sort of had really small spacecraft or spacecraft where the cabins are sort of tight and you don't think about how people would get into like the space shuttle but it's sort of awkward. It's not really for casual passengers. And so for casual passengers, you really need the thing oriented horizontal. And that is the purpose of the rocket sled. So it is so that you transition from the horizontal orientation to the vertical orientation up there. So you can have, uh, there's a limit to how much you can have the whole, whole thing inclined. You can have it somewhat inclined but really, for the comfort of people boarding the spacecraft, you don't want it too much inclined at the start. And so you need to have this sort of curve going up. You need to have the curve going up, generally speaking, because it's really hard to pull up otherwise. You're going to end up going really fast horizontally, but then the spacecraft is going to have to pull up at the end in order to go vertical because we have to escape the atmosphere and that entails a lot of drag and losses if you don't have the ramp itself tilting up at the end. So with all that let's test how this is all going to work. Uh, now in this version I have little separatrons on the sled. I haven't taken off the liquid fuel tanks. I did take off the liquid engines and we're still using boosters, uh, solid rocket motors. And I've got parachutes on the rocket sled. This is the parachute version. The better version is one where the rocket sled has retro rockets to keep it on the ramp uh, instead of falling off the end of it. Uh, we are going with the falling off the end with parachutes version. Now these SRBs, which are the shuttle SRBs, five segment ones, uh, really we don't need more than one segment. We need less than one segment. So I'm probably going to design custom SRBs for this system and I do think that SRBs are a good idea. A big, uh, the vapor and the feed line thing, oh yeah, I ignored Death Star in the background, sorry about that. It's, it's hanging out there. Uh, but uh, that's because I, that's, this is the install where I tested the Death Star, okay? Uh, so it is really, really big. So we I don't know about the vapor and feed line issues, so I'm going to keep it SRBs, but maybe we want liquid engines? I'm not sure. If I really solidly knocked out the vapor and feed line issue from the previous rocket sled video, maybe I would go away from the, the solid boosters, but they are sort of nice in that they're consistent. The downside is you have to get the exact amount of fuel in them right. So let's see what happens with 50,000. Uh, saying that and I want smart ASS ready to go and actually when I brought this out it already blew up the docking port in the back so that's convenient uh, it does rock a lot it isn't exactly stable it's on these 
sort of launch clamps, but there's actually no launch clamp on the opposite end because I couldn't reach it in the SVH. So that's a bit of a problem. Anyway, we are controlling from here. And that's the aim point. And we will have this at the heading that we're going to be going at. And I'm going to start off at 45 degrees, zero roll. So that's what we end up with in theory. And boosters. So I mentioned uh, wheels. I don't think you're going to get much more acceleration with wheels. I think you're overestimating Kerbal wheel physics. Okay, and then, oh, uh, we had uh, the vapor and feline phase, but we want the... Okay. Oh, 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 that's bad. Okay, so they're, they're still going there. But they are sort of wiping out. Alright, we, we, we might have to hang on to it just a little bit more. Um, or I could dump even more fuel, but... Let's try it hang out for a little bit more. One thing I'm concerned about is as the SRBs sort of die down, they have a thrust curve. Uh, when they have less thrust, then the engines here are basically pushing the whole load. And then they can get vapor and feed lines too. Okay, it has released the docking port in the back again, all on its own. So fine and see it's rocking a bit uh, we'll let it calm down hopefully if it's at all not a flat surface under this and this is a flat surface because this is my Tampico scenery and made it a flat surface if it's at all not a flat surface under this it goes crazy so yep Somebody said they were amazed that it didn't all blow up immediately. Well, if you take it out on the stock runway, it will. All right. So again, uh, it seems to already have aimed camera and everything. Here we go. Okay, I think we can let it go. Hopefully. Ooh, we might need to do something about the aerodynamics of that, because I don't think we want it torching this at all. Alright, well, I don't normally fly this manually. I do use KOS to fly it, but you're going to try this. See, it's having trouble pitching up, but it's getting there. At least we got a bit of a boost. Ooh, we've still got the little clamp bits. Ah, uh, forgot about that. I'll have to create a custom decoupler. Okay, well, you're not supposed to be going beyond 60. Was it controlling without the smart ASS? That's interesting. It is very well balanced. Oh. Well, you know what? We really need to check whether it actually survives. So, hold on. I mean, this is going to get to orbit. It's fine. It's got plenty of delta V. Um, let's revert to launch again. And this time we'll follow the sled to see whether the parachutes actually save it. I mean, again, ideally we want retro rockets and keep to keep it on the ramp, but the parachute way is somewhat more efficient. I wonder what happened to the docking port. I mean, I'm reverting to launch and then the docking port has just totally disappeared. Okay. Let me let it calm down. Does it say anything? It doesn't even say anything about that. It just completely got rid of the docking port attaching the sled, the sled to the ramp. And it pretends nothing happened. Okay, I think it's stable enough right now. Let's go. 
it's so basically it's like a half segment of a boost of one of these boosters or something like that. Not bad. If you just split one of these boosters up into six separate boosters, that'd do the trick. Okay. Okay. All right, and let it go. Ooh. Okay. Um, oh no, it's not a controllable object. It's so it totally has. Ah. Uh, it's got KOS on it. Usually, that's a sign of a controllable object. Control point default. Um. Okay, but fine. I'm just gonna put a controller in the back. Okay, well now it has control core. Oh boy. Okay, can I go to it? Alright, fine. Oh no, don't do that. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, these are a little bit iffy. Wow. I thought with Kerbal Joint Reinforcement it'd be okay. Okay, the parachutes, but we'll see with the parachutes. Can they carry this load at all? Oh, probably not. 600 tons. Dry mass of those boosters is too much. Yeah, 20 meters per second. I mean, not that's not bad for 660 tons. Oh gosh. Oh, what even happened there? I don't know why it just did that. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's so glitchy. It might actually ruin the entire game. Um, okay, I need to make the smaller boosters. You know what? We've got procedural SRBs, right? They are always really messed up though. <laughs> um, okay, let me try and put procedural SRBs on instead of having 600 tons of SRB. Well, not really. The, the sled is really heavy too. Oh, I don't get how this is calculating this. This doesn't seem right. There's a 3.7 meter diameter SRB it's only generating 264 kilonewtons in 30 seconds with 50,000 solid fuel. Okay, that side is reading a different one. I like that side more. Uh, but the nozzles just don't like to agree with each other. Okay. All right, now we're getting the right amount, maybe. Oh, no, no, it's gone bad again. Oh no, it's gone all new text. No, it doesn't like me anymore. Okay, it's gone all buggy. Ah, uh, it's multiplying and not going away. What's even going on? I'm pressing delete and... Okay, alright, alright. Okay, I'm trying to size it over here before putting it on in the hope that that will have better results. Fifteen meters, three point seven, I think that's like one segment. Do you keep those numbers? Oh, but we can get better efficiency. Oh. Um those are like the regular shell SRBs. I'll take those numbers. Okay, I'm not gonna touch them. Just gotta copy them. I hope copying works. Now it still says 43 tons dry. Each. That seems worse. <laughs> 
It seems, at least considering they're so much smaller than the five segment ones, the dry mass is horrible. Oh, and this ISP doesn't match that ISP. So that gives me concern as well. It should be lighter though. Okay, let's try this out. But it would be better if I make the whole sled shorter for this thing. Though arguably, once the once the Ryan carry plane lights its engines, we probably should have actually a deflection for the engine thrust on the rear end of this. Oh, oh, it loaded on the stock runway. Well, that's what happens when it loads on a stock runway. Okay, okay. Okay, it's just this normal bouncy self, <laughs> self at this point. Uh, oh, but that part has gotten under. The, the collider's sort of got weird. Let me try and revert to launch. And as usual, when I revert, it, it starts out with an exploding sound, and that's usually the docking port. Okay. So the goal of this is to see whether the recovery of the sled actually works at all with the parachute version. Let's see. Well, at least the SRVs are doing their thing. It caused me a lot of trouble. That's a lot of extra Delta V though. But who knows if it's reading right. A little bit too early. Oh, it's doing the thing again. Oh, and then they, they sort of glitch out. They last way too long. Oh, I'll take that. Go. I've got to auto strut them. Let me see if I can do it now. Heaviest part? Uh, the problem is there's no good auto strut option for them. Oh, go, go, go. Well, I'm just gonna keep them going until they go. Oh, they, they've got way too much time. Well, they're giving it a lot of boost. Now they're a proper booster kind of thing. Okay. Two hundred and fifty-two tons right now. Parachutes out. Sixteen of them. I mean we only plan to make the SRBs smaller. They're too big right now. No ten meters per second. If we make them smaller. It'd be alright if things were balanced a little bit better here. Unfortunately, we have all our mass in the tail. What is going on? Why does it seem like it hits something at this height? Oh, but the terrain might be, because this is Tampico, it might have actually hit the terrain, but then it's still going down. Well, I think it feels like it's landed. The collider of the terrain probably extends too far. I'll have to adjust that. Okay. That's a whole other issue, but it sort of survives. But what's the right timing, really? These are looking rather cute. Oh, it's doing the weird thing. 12 seconds. Well, this time I'm pretty confident that the thing will sort of survive. I'll follow the payload out this time, make sure it makes orbit and everything. The next step will be trying to have the Orion carrier plane separate while we're still on the ramp so that the sled 
can stop on the ramp. And retrofire itself back. That is more ambitious. And booster firing. Almost. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. That's not good. Maybe we'd need them to have a little bit of thrust tail off. Let's just set it to 60. All right. Oh, they went vapor and feline there. The liquid fuel engines are sure sensitive sometimes, though. Okay, that's usually where they have problems. Okay, off. No. Uh, okay, it all disintegrates. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna do this with the five segment SRB version just one more time to make my to make me feel better. And then I'll have to come up with a custom some custom SRBs that have a particular curve or something so that they don't go all crazy. If the SRB thrust cuts out too much to drag from the rocket sled ends up killing things so well that's gonna be all sorts of trouble later on too huh but you know i don't think the rocket sled if it's still on the ramp the rocket sled at least won't flip into the orion carrier plane which seems to be the problem gotta reduce the amount of fuel in these even more let's say forty thousand basically one ninth of one of the five segment SRVs. I might lengthen the entire ramp to give us and I really need to smooth out that bump. Okay well at least I've ascertained how much fuel we actually need for launching this thing. Okay separation. <laughs> yep it might be the whole surface going up and down causing fuel to get unsettled too. Oh, it might not be enough. Uh, it might not be enough. Uh, the SRBs diminish in thrust too soon. Okay, but we can sort of do this. Okay, we can light anyway. Not ideal. It wasn't perfect, but we're gonna go to orbit now. Okay, <laughs> I've had enough. Bad enough. We're gonna go to orbit now. Now, technically, like this, the Orion carrier plane would overshoot its landing area. There's the Death Star again. Which is supposed to be the Bahamas. But we just put a heavier load on it and that solved that problem. Oh! The star looking even better now that we're higher up. I was working on a space interceptor as well. That should be interesting. Well, we were supposed to shut off some engines. The force is getting a little bit high. Okay, cutting that. Separation, ignition, fairings. And that's the Kumo with its transfer stage. I like having the Death Star in the right there. <laughs> Go figure, right? 
Well, we're getting a little bit lopsided here. Uh, that's not ideal. All right, a little bit messed up. Um, the Death Star is getting closer. Well, as we float by the Death Star, uh, that's it for the experimentation with the rocket sled for now. I'll have to redo it. I'll build in the SRVs now that I have an idea of how big they need to be. Um, and I also build in the retro rockets, but I don't know how well that's going to work. Probably I'm going to have to stretch out the ramp. But that's going to take a whole lot of other experimentation, which I won't do right now. For now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.